Hi there, you're very welcome to our student spotlight and today we're speaking to Rhys Ward who is a second year student of the Bachelor of Arts degree. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. Tommy, where are you speaking to us from today? Yeah, I'm in Minute at the moment, I'm living on campus uh, so I, I am away from home at, um, at the moment. So were you on campus in first year as well, Rhys? I was, yeah, luckily enough. So yeah, yeah I was lucky enough to get the uh, second year as well. How does that work actually? So if you, you get it first year, obviously you apply and, and hopefully you get your spot. And then in second year, what is the qualification required to get campus accommodation? It, it is the same procedure as far as I know. It, I think that the first years do get kind of the the, the, um, the first kind of the priority when it comes to the the, um, the on-campus accommodation. So it was very it was actually very easy to get it in, in first year. So it, it, it was pretty much whoever came in first come kind of first serve after the, the priority first years so I it was it was more so just pure look look at the draw more than anything so who are you sharing with is it mixed to, is it a mix of all kinds of people or it's a, they're all they're all second years actually just by chance uh, and but they're they're that's all a mix of different people from different um different subjects different different courses but, um, yeah. So you're from Athlone, um, which you could potentially commute from Athlone to Maynooth if there are buses, aren't there? Yeah. Um, but, you, but you decided to move up. So tell us about um, being a leaving cert student in Athlone and what you're thinking in terms of college. Um, well, obviously it, it was it was it kind of conflicted now and torn between um, different colleges and different courses and. And just what what I wanted to do after after the leaving cert. So, um, but it, it really took me now when I started going to a few of the open days, um, that I started obviously started to think uh, think to take it more seriously and it kind of hit home that your know, college was a real thing. So, but uh, when I, I when I went to the minute open day, I, I did kind of have my mind made up as uh, as soon as, and it also helped that I I did have um family members in Minute actually at the time so it, it was uh it was nice to know that I had people there as well and the campus was just very inviting um so it was, it was a no-brainer really when I when I went there. So you are familiar with Minute and with the yeah. university so that kind of made it easier decision for you but you're in Athlone so in effect you're in the center of the country you could you could potentially go anywhere really oh, yeah, um definitely. yeah especially yeah. if you're going to move away from home so you did look at other colleges but you liked what Manutha had to offer. Exactly, yeah. Tell us about choosing the arts degree then. How did that come about? Arts because um, it was kind of an easy decision for me because um, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, I, I have the, since decided to end, end up teaching. So an arts is such an, e an easy way of doing that. You know, it's, a, it's a, obviously the arts, um, it's a, ge a general study at the beginning. And then when you go into teaching, you just do your master's in education. But um, for for someone like me who just really had no idea what I what I wanted to do, um, in the future, art kind of kind of set, set that foundation for me to go into different mm -hmm. avenues. But I, I think I'm lucky enough that I have kind of settled on teaching. Um, uh, but there's a lot of people in my in the arts course that have still have no idea what they want to do. But mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter because it's so broad when when you're studying the arts course. Yeah, right. So you have your. 34 odd subjects to choose from yeah. you are um taking history and English. what's your second subject English. and English yeah um were they favorite subjects in school and you sort of were committed to them from day one in Maynooth or did you try out other things um I, definitely history was and um, it, it wasn't until uh, later on maybe a little, a little bit after the leaving cert I started I started taking an interest in English and um it, it was pure, again pure chance I was looking at the groupings and and, and and how the um, the sub the subjects worked uh, with the arts course and um, English and history were, were up there and I I kind of jumped to it straight away and um, honestly I delighted I picked it and I, I don't have any any regrets at all so I I'm very comfortable now in the course as it is. But did you take that opportunity at the start of the first semester and first year to try out different subjects and and maybe see if there was something else that was. I did, yeah, because um, even when I was, as I was saying, I do have family members up here, and they're primarily doing law. Um, so I, I, I have been talking at home about doing law, about doing also psychology as well, and um, I, I dabbled in those for a bit, you know, trying to you know broaden my interests a bit. But 
um, history and English were kind of, it's, it's, what, it's what I said with in the end, this is what I was drawn to. Mm. As I recall from, from my leaving cert, a lot of, uh, a lot of essays, a lot of, uh, a yeah. lot of writing involved, a lot of research. Yeah. So, but did you find that coming into first year in those subjects that that helped that you were sort of well primed to, to take them up and yeah, there is that because English and history. I mean, they're they're you know they, they're um, they're very essay heavy kind of um, sub subjects. And if if you ask me during the leaving cert, I, I was definitely the wrong guy to be talking about by doing essays. But I I feel like, I honestly do feel like this. Uh, no matter what you're like in leaving cert, once you arrive to college, it's a it's a, it's a different experience, and you mature very quickly, and you kind of get you get. It's a, it's a different setting and I think you, you, you yourself you'll, you'll understand like it, it, it's much different so you'll take it you'll take it much more seriously and um, there's a lot more uh, of independence involved in, in it you know teachers aren't on your back kind of uh, force and work down you it's it's up to you and personally and from experience a lot of my friends like it's that independence that, that actually gives that motivation to even do more work that it definitely was for me and my friends anyway okay so it sounds like you kind of hit the ground running in, in some respects that you, yeah. you knew what you had to do when you did it yeah, exactly. um yeah. i'm sure that there are some teething problems so i mean it, you kind of it, you're effectively going from to half the amount of time that you have in class that you maybe you had in the leaving cert so it's it's definitely a challenge isn't it to really do yeah. it yourself it is definitely a challenge but again as i said um i i do i do feel like it it just it comes your your maturity kind of comes with that and you you kind of owe it to yourself as i said your uh, lecturers aren't on your back as uh, like half as much as the um, secondary school uh, teachers are. So you, you do honestly you owe it to yourself because there there is no slack as such. I mean you're doing you're doing it for yourself and you know no one else is is, is there to really help you, um, um other than just giving you advice and, and trying. But you, you usually you have to seek that yourself. Um, but I, I do I do feel like that that kind of that you develop that. As soon as you arrive. Yeah. What was it like walking into your first English and history? They would be big subjects in terms of student numbers, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're big subjects. Yeah. Big lecture halls. Um, I don't know if the lecture halls make it look a lot bigger than, than there actually is, but uh, it was a bit intimidating at first. Um, Did you have but, friends from school that came up to Manus as well? Or? Yeah. Look, luckily enough, I had, I had one or two and they're, they're actually doing history and English as well. So it worked out brilliant. Actually, I was very lucky in that sense. Um, very lucky. I happened to sit down beside um, very nice people and I'm friends with them to this day. Like, and, okay. But there, you do, there's an element of just putting yourself out there. You know, you have to throw yourself into the deep end a little bit. Like there's not, there's not a whole lot of, of excuse for it. Um, yeah. You you took um, critical skills, I think, as your third yeah. subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could have done double English and then double history, I think, but you decided to do the critical skills. So tell what's critical skills about, and did that help you? Yeah, well, it, it was brilliant, uh, and I couldn't even I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, it's the base. It it sets you up with this with a foundation of what you're going to need to get through college in terms of your academics. So, um. The very, the very start of it, you're, look, you're looking at um, citation and referencing, which is, a, you know, even even for me today, it's, it's, it's quite complicated to wrap my head around some of it, like, because it's just remembering all the different um, kind of technicalities of the different citation. Um, um, Harvard referencing or yeah. there's different styles of it yeah. as well, and, and yeah. It is, it is hard to remember it all, but uh, critical skills kind of teach you it, ways of remembering. And then essay writing, structure, and the difference between formal writing and informal writing. Even though it might seem obvious that what it is, but it's it's really not. <laughs> and actually, it takes you when you're doing critical skills actually to teach you that. But um, and one thing I noticed the most was if um, a few of my friends who weren't doing critical skills, they that might ask me to proofread an essay for them or something, and I, I couldn't believe how many mistakes they were making. Be and uh, purely because I'm no expert now, but I I wasn't making those mistakes because. I learned them in critical skills sure. and it's those small um, little kind of syntax errors and stuff that, that add up so much and mm. critical skills kind of wipe that it wipes that out straight away and, and just make it a, a lot less intimidating because it gives you that foundation that you need to do yeah. your work right. 
And in arts, you can take it with any subject combination. Yeah. So it, it'll be 15 of your 60 credits. So mm. yeah, you, you had your 45 then were for your English and history. Mm. Um, and you only take it in first year. So now you're in second year now and you're, 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 you're two subjects and you'll do the same then in your final year and third year. Exactly. Um, would you have gone on an Erasmus or anything like that? Did you kind of think about doing anything like that after second year? I know you're not taking a language, but you could still go and study abroad if yeah, um, there wasn't I, a global I, pandemic. <laughs> well, there is that. I'm a, I'm a bit of a homebird myself now. I, I, don't, I don't fancy going abroad at all. And the, the only thing I was looking at, obviously, is, pl is placement. And that, that was the only thing that really that, that attracted me to the whole work side of it. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been... Um, too keen on, on going abroad or anything like that sure. it, it's there for me if I do need to if I do need that uh, extra experience. So in terms of applying to the PME the professional master of education so that's your primary school or sorry your secondary school teaching qualification um what it, what do you think what's required for that or are you kind of getting yourself ready to make that application obviously after your final year yeah it, 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 that that's it's the next thing to do isn't it um about besides just being preparing yourself uh, kind of with the knowledge and just doing and um, doing it right obviously you need to um have, have your all your um your your grades and check because mm -hmm. you won't be able to get in unless you <clears throat> unless you meet the, the certain uh, criteria for that um but honestly and it's something i i have been thinking about i, I there's, there's no point applying for it unless i know what i'm going to get myself into so i think even even after my final year, I might take a, a, another year out to do a little bit more um, kind of study just in my own time. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe research the topic a little bit more and just have an idea what I'm getting into rather than just jumping into it and trying to get it all, you know, out of the way and done. Yeah. Like figure out what I'm getting into. You have plenty of time anyway. You're oh, yeah, look. So. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about uh, what clubs and societies, are, did you join any or mm -hmm. get involved? Yeah, um, so that that was kind of a, a big thing for me. I wanted to get into my, into my clubs because I, I, you know, kind of I'd be, I'd be sporty enough. Um, so I, I, I kind of dabbled in a few. I, I tried the powerlifting club, I tried the, the boxing club, um, the, 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 the swim, uh, swimming club as well. And they, they were they were very good. Like I mean, the thing the thing about those is I they can be a bit intimidating. And this was my issue trying to get involved in them because, for example, the boxing and powerlifting, that was something I, I was thinking of taking up new. I had never done that before. And so I was walking into the, into the club and I was seeing these guys who were playing for the, their counties at home. And it's very intimidating walking into them. But, um, you know, it was an awful relief just to see now that they do, they do have certain sections for beginners and intermediates and advanced and professional. So, um, the, all the all the clubs are um, kind of sort of sort out in a way that they just cater for everyone's skill set, no matter what they are as well. You don't have to be an elite power no, no, lifter or anything. No, yeah. no, nothing like that. Well done. Decide just to get a bit more experience. Yeah. So tell us about any words of advice that you might have for somebody who's considering Maynooth or considering the arts degree. Um, I feel I feel like art, an arts degree is genuinely the way to go whether you whether you know what you want to do in the future or not because if you're if you, there isn't so the, obviously there's an option for example if you want to uh, go into law and um, you can study straight law and then you can go and you're going straight on your way to be a solicitor or a barrister or whatever it is and um, but also but if, if you're not sure entirely you can study law and then you can study something like for example english but that opens up uh, other doors for sort of the things like, for example, journalism or something, you know, so you're not, so you're not set in, 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 in one way when you go into arts, which I don't, it's a really a no brainer when you think about it, when you just to do it and it might be an extra two years or so, but I mean, what's two years compared to the rest of your life? Like, it gives you that ch chance, isn't it? To just sample out different areas that you might be interested exactly. in and then, the flexibility that you could move into another degree after your first year if you uh, if you get the grades yeah that's great it was lovely lovely to talk to you today and best of luck <laughs> for semester two okay thank you thanks Reese.